Hello everyone and welcome back to the garage. Today we've got this very nice R1200R here to do a quick oil change, spark plugs, air filter and just give it a check over, see if anything else needs doing. So let's get started. So I'm going to start by cleaning the sump because there seems to be an oil leak here but most of it seems to be coming from the oil filter area so hopefully the new one will solve this issue. And I'm just going to open up the drain plug and let the oil drain. Now I should mention this engine is still pretty warm so that'll help the oil flow out easier. Also don't forget to take off the old crush washer. Having two of them in there would probably cause a leak. Next remove the oil filter. And this one was on very tight. Maybe that's why it started to leak. Great, it's off. Now I can let it drain overnight and do something else in the meantime. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the spark plugs now, but for that I need to take off these crash guards. Next up I'm going to unplug the bottom coil. It's important to mention when you remove these, try not to bend it in any way, just pull it straight out if you can. Now get a socket on the spark plug and let's see what it looks like. Now onto the top one, remove the plastic cover, unplug the coil again, just so I can set it aside, but you could just leave it dangling if you want. Now the stick coil tool I have doesn't actually fit these coils, so I'm just going to use a prying tool instead, but again, trying not to bend the coil in any way, just pull it straight out. There we go. And now for the spark plug. And there we go, I'm done with the side. Now do the same for the other one. And here we have all four spark plugs out. So when you're tightening something in an engine, like spark plugs or to some extent even a drain plug, you'd want the engine to be cold. If it's warm, that torque setting was not going to be really accurate and you could end up damaging things. So yeah, I'm just going to let the oil drain overnight and tomorrow morning I'm going to tighten the drain plug, tighten the spark plugs, fill it up with oil. But until then, I could replace the air filter, and to do that I need to take the seat off. And that brings us to the next problem. If you look right there, that should be a keyhole to, to unlock the seat, and it's gone. It's not there. According to the owner, some of the neighborhood kids pushed that in. So the lock is in the bike under the seat, it's just not accessible. So let's see if you can get to it and install it back in place. So I'm just going to undo the screws that hold the mudguard in place and try to pop it out of its place. You have to bend it a bit to get it out, but it is doable. And there's the lock, so now I can pop the seat off. And the air filter hides in here. So I'm gonna take care of the lock a bit later, but for now let's carry on with the air filter. So I need to remove these two panels uh, about six bolts, I think. One, two, somewhere there, two, three. On the silver one, and on the black one, I've got two more. Yeah, so five bolts. Take those off, and I'll show you what the next step is. So I'm just going to pop off these plastic wedge type clips. The top one is harder to get out because of the fuel tank. And I can pull off the inlet and expose the air filter. It's got a stud going through a rubber grommet at the front. And here's the air filter. A bit dirty on the front, but not too bad. It actually seems to be quite clean. The new filter going in. and just put the bits back together as they were. And before I carry on with the oil change, I'm just going to check if there are any stored fault codes, but the spike seems to be clean. And also check the condition of the battery. 
and this battery's state of health is 100%, which is pretty good. The owner did say he keeps it connected to an optimizer. But the battery connectors seem to be a bit corroded, so I'm just gonna clean them up with a wire brush, and cover them with a smear of dielectric grease. Next up I'm gonna have a look at the brakes, and the caliper and the brake line seem to be in good condition, brake pads seem to have some life left in them, and I'm checking the brake disc thickness, and that's still good. And the same for the front, calipers are in good condition, brake pads are fine, brake lines are good, and even the thickness is still over the limit, so we're good to go here. Just having a quick look at the front suspension, clutch lever and clutch fluid, various bits around the engine, and check for oil leaks, I'm not going to go into too much detail as I'm trying to keep this short, checking the fork seals and the pivot joint, having a quick look at the tires and the tire pressure, Checking the lights, it all seems to work fine. The side stand operation and the switch. The rear brake master cylinder and reservoir. Rear tire. Rear tire pressure is a bit low, so I'm gonna pump that up. Bearings are all good, without any play. And here are some nasty bits. The final drive bellow is cracked, and the actual retaining clip is a bit damaged, so it's not seating in place properly. So that can allow water and dirt to get in, not great. The gearbox bellow is also very perished, so it would be good to replace that. And although it's not something I usually do, the owner also asked me to check the level and the condition of the gearbox oil, but not replace it now. Level's good, oil doesn't look too bad, so I'm just gonna put the plug back in and torque it to spec. I have to mention the bike stayed overnight now, and it's all cold. The same with the final drive. This plug seems a bit corroded, so I'm gonna spray some WD-40 on it. And it all looks pretty good, but unfortunately, as it's often the case with these, when you take it out, you damage the o-ring. So I'm just gonna put a new one on, and put the plug back in. So there's the new o-ring going back on the plug. Clean it up so there's no oil residue left, and we're done here. Here we have four new spark plugs ready to go in. Tighten them all to the correct torque setting. Bit of silicone oil on the stick holes so they slide in easier. Pop it in, connect it. Put the cover back on. And do the same for the bottom one. Add the cylinder head guards back in place. And do the same thing on the other side. And now I'm ready to finish the oil change. I'm just gonna clean the sump and put the drain plug back in with a new crush washer. Tighten it to the correct torque setting. Clean up the space for the oil filter as well. And here's the new filter. Now some people may disagree, but my preference is to fill it up with fresh oil, as long as it's coming from a clean and sealed container. And here it is going back in place. Now because it's quite buried in there and you can't tighten it by hand, you have to use the correct torque setting for it. And ready to pour some fresh oil in. This is always a very satisfying part for me. So I'm gonna make you watch it. And here it is, at the correct level, but it probably will need a bit of a top-up after I run the engine. And indeed, the level has dropped a bit, so top that up and we're done. Now when I got the bike, it looked like there was a bit of an oil mist around the fill plug, so I'm just gonna put a new o-ring in there before I give it back. 
some silicon oil on the new one so it slides in easier and pop it in and there we go job's done thanks for watching and i'll see you next time